Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Hotspot. We are so excited to be back. We have a fresh batch of amazing, awesome teenagers. I used amazing and awesome because you guys are just that great. At least in my eyes, I think you guys are amazing and awesome. And uh, I'm so excited to have all of you with us today. We have Celeste. Hi. <laughs> we have Eve. We have Kieran. Hi. <laughs> and last but not least, we have TJ. Yeah. Yeah. He really wanted to throw up the piece. He's like, can I do peace? And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. whatever. That's fine. That's cool. <laughs> but this is great. This is great. It's so good to be with you guys. It's a, just a real conversation with real students, just about real life. And there's lots of real life happening right now. Lots of, lots of craziness, uh, but also lots of really good. And so uh, we we're just so thankful to be able to have this conversation. I, uh, I love being able to have these conversations with high school students. I said it before in other episodes, I'm going to keep saying it. I think high school students have so so much to offer. I think you guys have so much potential. And I think we have really great conversations that are probably really inspiring and encouraging for other high school students. So before we start talking, remember that you guys have something to offer, something to give. So that's great. So how's everybody feeling today? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah, pretty good. good. Solid. Not awesome. Amazing, but pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. Getting yeah, through. <laughs> yeah, you're getting through. I'm exactly. <laughs> Yeah, if, if you weren't aware, uh, we're in Ontario, and so we are in the midst of our second lockdown where you're mostly staying at home, and uh, it gets a little old pretty quickly. And anybody else agree with that? Yeah. Yes. I mean, this time was better, though. This yeah, I was, was yeah, I guess we're a little more prepared for it. It's also winter, so... When so it's we're inside inside outside anyway. Yeah, you know what I mean? You're like, well, I didn't really want to go out, you know, but <laughs> I, it's, you miss friends, though, right? Yeah. 100%. That's the worst part. Yeah. So I know that uh, I just have to say this. I just got to, I just got to throw it out there. So Eve, you just got a new dog. I did. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about your new dog? Because this is very exciting. Yes. Yeah, so this is something that I've wanted for a really, really long time. I've always wanted a pug. Um, and so for Christmas, my dad made me like a little video that was saying on the 29th of November, we would go and pick her up. So we picked her up and she was really like quiet at first, mm. but anyway, we named her Mocha, Mocha. And, but I call her Mo mm -hmm. just cause that was the name that I always wanted to use. Um, and she's a very well-behaved dog. That's awesome. She sleeps most of the time, but you said the 29th of November. Did you mean January? <laughs> And you said, I said Christmas. November. I'm said very Christmas, certain. And then you no, said 29th of November. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. No, it was a Christmas gift, but we did pick her up in January. Okay. Yeah. That makes the timeline was really confusing there. She's like, it was for Christmas. <laughs> and so on She's the 29th like, of November, we picked her up. And I was like, wait, no, what? I meant like, January. I'm so gotcha. Well, yeah. I saw a few posts of it and she's super cute. So if you guys just get to, you know, follow Eve on social media, and I'm sure you'll see lots of Mo or Mocha for long. I have lots of pictures coming up. Of course. Yeah, for long. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I, you know what pugs they're uh they're great they're they're great little dogs so many yeah. people think they're ugly i, don't I mean see they're it, so like... ugly they're cute you know <laughs> I, yeah i've heard that i've heard that <laughs> i like pugs because i always just think about men in black from my childhood like the movie yeah. men in black there was the pug it was the alien yeah that's great that's awesome anyways uh i just had to bring that up because new puppies are super exciting so and uh yeah that's that's good and celeste i just wanted to say like you have a horse I do. So I it's do. a little bigger than Eve's pug. Just oh, a little yeah, bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> like that much. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Celeste rides horses and she does like tricks with them where she like jumps over stuff. She's like, a, what do you even call that? Is it like professional riding? Like what's the term? It's like hunter jumpers is the discipline that, hunter you, use, that you jump around and stuff. So that's cool. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, uh, and then you also have TJ and Kieran, and they play video games. So yes, sir. <laughs> I have a dog, actually. We both have dogs. Yeah, we, we both, both have dogs. Have dogs yeah, I have a dog, a too. Cat. That's cool. Yeah. I have well, a dog, too. Everybody has a dog. All, all the best people have dogs. I get it, right? So anyways, I'm excited to be here with you guys for us to have a real conversation. And today we wanted to talk about the idea of when we feel lost, when we feel maybe even a little alone. And I think in a season like this that we're in, where we're, we've been in this lockdown, we haven't been at school. I know you guys are starting school again uh, this week or next week, but you know, it's just 
everything's weird. Everything's different. And so as you get out of your routine and you're not seeing people the same way that you have in the past, you get a little disconnected and that can lead to feeling a little lost. And I'm sure that that's something that a lot of teenagers, a lot of people in general can relate to is just this feeling of just, where am I right now? Like you're, you're at home, you're in the same place, but you're mentally almost emotionally just a little lost and a little confused. And so we just wanted to chat a little bit about that and hope that, you know, we can bring some encouragement and some hope to some people, because I know a lot of people out there are feeling that. So why, why do you guys think that in a season like this, when things are changing or even life in general, why is it so easy to feel lost? I think it's mostly because of the unpredictability mm. of where the virus is going to take you. Right. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, I, I, I agree. Like, because we're so used to having a routine of going to school or going to work and then going home and then eating dinner. And like, it's just like, we have this constant routine and like, that's what we have calendars for, for mm. dates, for upcoming things that we aren't normally in our routine. But when, something throws a wrench in our our like daily routine then how like what are we supposed to do like we aren't used to not knowing what to do and when you don't know what you're doing and you don't know what's happening that's Mm. what lost is right so totally it's just kind of it at least for me that's what it's like is like i feel lost when i'm when i just don't have any like i don't have my normal routine i don't know what i'm supposed to be doing hundred percent. That's so fair. And you know, I think what's really fun about this conversation is I just had two high school students who traditionally are like, I hate my routine. I hate that. I have to go to school every day. I hate that my schedule is handed to me are now in the season where your routine's gone. And you're like, I miss my routine. <laughs> it's kind of ironic, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. I a mean, lot like of nowadays, school- you feel like you're stuck in a loop almost like I feel like mm-hmm. a broken record. You wake up, you do the same things every day. And you can't help but feel lost because you don't see any movement really in your life. Like you don't feel like you're getting anywhere. You're just kind of stuck. And that can also lead to not feeling connected. Mm -hmm. Like you don't see your friends and you don't, you don't really see where your life is going. Yeah. Like I don't see any, and then you can also lose like, what's my purpose? Like, what am I supposed to be doing? Should I be Mm -hmm. doing something in this time? And like taking advantage of it so mm. yeah no, that's like, so um, true uh for me like we had like this was like 2020 was probably the first year we bought like a big calendar and we put it on the fridge and like my dad started like uh all the stuff that we were doing like for the first month and then like he would write all the stuff down like like he would do on a calendar and then for january it was sick like we did all this stuff that was on the calendar. And then for February, we did all this stuff on the calendar. And then March hit and we were like, well, the first 13 <laughs> days was good. But uh, this, this, this whole other stuff. And then like another thing is like what Eve said about we don't know where we're going in life now because like all of our mind, like I'm, I'm sure this isn't just me, but like our minds were set on, okay, well, if this is how we're doing school, I can, I can do this here and I can do this here. And like, that's how we started to plan it. And like, Mm -hmm. do you, you do everything along the path and then the path will be right. Like that's what we've been doing. But Mm -hmm. because for me, I was going to be playing like football. I would have already had one season done of football and I still haven't played any football. Yep. So the path changes and, I mean, even you think don't have even, a map. it's like it's even, like you take a race car driver out of his loop and then you put him in a stance and he doesn't know what's going on yep yeah i think like even even now like even while we're still in covid it's the same thing like everyone like in school it's like oh you get used to used to you get used to this every other day cohort b cohort a thing and then they send you home for a little bit like a couple weeks and you're working from home and everything and then you get used to it and you start getting into that routine and then they throw you back into school yeah. and it's just this like back and forth kind of thing and it can really throw you for a loop totally yeah it's like of course you feel a little lost your routine is changing every other <laughs> month right and then you're trying to make a new routine and whatever that might be you know it's it's totally fair and it's it's a difficult time and you know i do want to say i think you guys as much as it may be difficult some days i'm really proud of all of you and i think 
for a lot of our students, a lot of other students out there, you've handled this really well because this is, you know, I'm so sick of hearing this term, but it's an unprecedented time. And, uh, you know, you get sick of those COVID terms, like in these times of uncertainty, you're like, just stop. Okay. Don't say new normal. I don't want to hear it, but it is unprecedented. And you guys have done really great. And I'm really proud of you guys. And so, you know, so you've all agreed, like, it's so easy to feel lost in this kind of season. So what are some ways that you guys think you can feel grounded? Like, how do you get a foundation? Like, how do you make a, a season where things are constantly changing around you? How do you get into that place of feeling a little more grounded? What do you do? Uh, for, for me, I, I know that I'm a person who this is like, I kind of like to go through the motions because like, I, I know it's not good and like, it's not, but like the way my life was set up, I was like, one day was, I was being a water boy for a lightning, like the lightning. Like that was what I was doing at the night. And then like by the, like in the daytime, I'm like going through school. And then Sunday was church. We jump around, have fun. And so once that all hits the curb, like then it's like, I have to find my own thing. So for me, another, like a way to stay grounded would be to like devote myself to actually being a solid Christian mm. and like actually worshiping like even like the one thing for me I found that this year or these past like these COVID this COVID year whatever I'll still call it that because we're not done that or whatever uh so through this COVID year or whatever uh I found that worshiping at home is very very effective like mm -hmm. I would say that it's probably better than at church I mean like not better wow. but like no no no, no okay yeah it's different because like at church everyone else is doing it and mm. it's like this is what we're doing this is the vibe yeah. but when you're at home you have to like decide like you have to be like yeah. okay i'm gonna do this yeah and even when you're alone at home that's when you're like i am gonna do this and i need to do this especially with reading your bible you can you can hear sermons you can listen to those those are all good it's just if you devote yourself to reading your bible then it's mm. just, like just that no, that's a really cool answer. It's like you're taking the time and the space to make it your own in a, in a way where it's not just something that's like part of my life because, hey, we're going to church. We're going to youth. You're like, I actually have to make this real for myself. So that's a cool answer. The way that you've been able to stay grounded in this time, you say, you know what? I'm actually going to, I'm going to get into the word. I'm going to spend some time worshiping, not just because everybody else in the room is doing it. And it may be awkward in your room, but kind of pushing past that and saying, you know, I, I'm not a Christian just because I go to church. It's because I actually believe in God. That's, that's cool. That's a really cool answer. Absolutely. What, what about some of the other guys? Like, what are some things that help you stay grounded in seasons? Um, well, like, I think for me, it's like, I'm not a very social person. I'm pretty introverted most times and like I quiet. And so, um, when it's, when I don't need to hang out with people, like I'm, I'm fully okay with that, but I do like, I have realized that it re it's really like I've missed like just talking with people and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so one thing that I've started doing is just like, like I'll get on, I'll get on discord or something and just like get into a call with someone. Yeah. And even if I'm just sitting there talking or like watching a TV show while I'm talking to them, yeah. it's just like catching up, you know, and just hanging sure. out. And it's the same thing with like, with my family, like we've played, board games and like card mm. games and stuff and it's just like yeah just little things that you keep you like social right like yeah. you need to be able to talk to people and that's another thing is like there's so much stress in life that you need to like you need to vent somehow and yeah. when you have people around and people to hang out with that you can vent normally you really got to take advantage of your family and like talk to your parents or someone it's For it's sure. really helpful no, that's really great, dude. Like we need people and I get it. Like at the beginning of the first lockdown, I was like, I'm fine. Like I'm a little introvert and I'll be, and then after a few weeks, you're like, yeah, I need, I need some people. All right. <laughs> so we have technology. So make use of it. You have a family, like talk to them for sure. That's good. When I'm feeling distant from, um, friends or, and also from God, like friends, I'll, I can FaceTime them. Um, but when I feel distant from God, I usually turn to worship music because that's mm. how I, I feel like I connect th more through song rather than reading my Bible. Mm. So that's what I'll do. Like if I feel like I need to vent, 
I don't really actually, I don't really talk to my friends about COVID that much because I find that my family, like I have a big family, like family of mm-hmm. six. It feels like we're just always complaining about COVID. Like that's what every conversation is. Yeah. And sometimes I just, I just want to forget about it and just talk to my friends about just regular stuff. For sure. So I think that's actually really good advice being like, don't just call your friend and be like, I'm so tired of this, which is okay to do, but actually call them and be like, let's just talk. Because then you feel real and normal again a little bit, right? And there's a consistency there. I think that's really good advice, like actually having a conversation about something else than just what you miss. Um, Something that I would do also during lockdown and everything is making sure that everybody that you, or most people that you know, like just like, simply check up on them and say like hey how you doing type thing and like just a short simple text that probably takes you like 20 seconds not even to send would make their day because people are like some people do struggle a lot through lockdown with them feeling lonely and stuff because you're restricted to whoever's in your household and stuff so Mm. um yeah like I know like I check up on um, my grandpa or something because he actually lives by himself. Mm. So he doesn't have anybody at all right now. Right. So, um, so yeah, just checking up on people. It helps them. And it also helps you knowing that they're doing all right. That's, that's great. I really like that. And I think you're totally right. Like if any of us were to get even just a short text from somebody being like, Hey, I'm really thinking about you, how you're doing. Like, we know how that would feel. That would be awesome. And that you have the chance to be able to do that for somebody else. And I Mm -hmm. also love what you said, Celeste, about, hey, it can actually help you. And we don't help others to make ourselves feel better, to help. That's not the the reason why we do it. But ultimately, in doing that, it can be good for you. And it can, you're, they're doing okay. And also, I, uh, you feel good about doing it. So why not do it? Because if you can, you know, help somebody else and also help yourself a little bit in that, that's great. Like, go for it. I love that. I think that's really, really great. And uh, no, yeah, like, uh, like in COVID, right? Like, it's hard to have a birthday and stuff. Like, like I just had my birthday, right? And it was in lockdown, and yeah. I was, I was like completely prepared to like not celebrate, you know. And I was like, it's, it's whatever. Um, but I, like, I went and I went outside because my mom was waiting outside. All I see is this like giant line of cars and. Like, although we had to social distance and stuff and like, they just drove fast and like you, Justin and TJ, you guys were there. And, but like that really, like that, like I had such low expectations because of COVID and it really, it really helped like just that social aspect of seeing that people care is really important. You know, like you got to show that people care because a lot of people are struggling, feeling like, oh, no one's like, there's no one to hang out with. What? And then they start doubting or thinking that no one wants to talk to them. Right. And then it's sure it's a huge struggle. Absolutely. No, that was a lot of fun. So if any of you don't know, Kieran had his 16th birthday the other day. He also just got his G1. So congrats, buddy. Watch out if you're driving. Uh, just, <laughs> but but uh, we were able to just get a number of different close friends of his whenever we drove past his house and we just honked our horns and screamed happy birthday at him while he was standing on his driveway. And it was super fun, but I love what you said. You know, you, even as an introvert, you're like, you know what? I am okay with being a little quieter and being off in the background, but then you notice in a season like this, that when you have something like that, how much life it gives you, right. And how much joy it actually brings to you, because it's easy when you're in a monotonous rhythm of regular life outside of, if we never had COVID in our scope to, to not even think about how much we need those things. But then this is a season where now going forward and coming out of the season, we can look back to it and remember, I need people. I need connection. I'm not going to take it for granted because I remember, you know, what it was like when I didn't have it. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we've touched on this just a little bit, but why do you guys think that in a season like this, when everything's a little different at home, why is it so easy to feel a little lost in our relationship with God and, and in following Jesus? Like, why is it so easy to kind of let that slip away and for it to feel different? What do you guys think? Well, um, for me, I know that, um, like, it's easy for me because, like, when you have, like, when you go from church on Sunday at the church, like, jumping around, and then you go from church online, like, those two things are, like, still church, but very different, obviously. Yeah. 
And like when you go from seeing your friends at this church, but then like online, you're like, oh, it's the family every week. That's a little bit hard. Like it's still like a choice. Like it's all in like your mind set, I guess. Yeah. Like if you wake up uh, thriving for God, mm-hmm. then you're obviously going to find him. Yeah. But it's easy to do it that way and all of school. And like, if right. like, when you're like, we can like, we, we kind of do this thing where we, we push the blame on other people. And like, yep. so when we're like, God, what the heck, man? Like, I thought we were, I thought we were good. And then all of this, like the pandemic and then like not being able to see friends and like all of this stuff. But then like, then you just have to like, remember, like, this is just like, this is where we have to certify ourselves as hope for other people. Like this is when like other people who are lost and like, who are like very lonely at this time, this is where we become the light for them in the darkness. For sure. Routine gets shaken up and you just have to change the way that we're doing things and looking at things for sure. Um, I wanted... oh, Sorry. Oh, no, 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 you can go. Okay. Um, just adding a little bit onto what TJ said, it's easy to feel unmotivated in this time, like so easy. And like bringing the difference back from online church and like church, like in the building, um, it's just, it's still the same, yes, but it's not, it's very easy to be unmotivated to try your best to listen or, um, or in school, like online school is definitely a challenge for a lot of people too, because um, like you don't have like the in-person encouragement or yeah. just even environment to um, keep you going. So yeah. a lot of people tend to brush things aside I, I'll be guilty a couple times and I'll say like, oh, I'll do this project later. I'll, uh, I'll read my, my Bible plan later. And you just keep pushing everything back because you're just so unmotivated to do everything. And then and you're like, that was a month ago. Like what? Yeah, it, it's it's sure. crazy. I just think people, yeah, it's, it's definitely a challenge for quite a few people to motivation for sure absolutely totally understand and it's understandable like we all get it people are like i just not feeling the motivation like (laughs) you you had different motivations when uh when it was in person right and so i think what it kind of reveals is like okay so if i'm not feeling motivated then what's the reason to do it maybe there was something that i had wrong about my walk with god my relationship with jesus maybe it shouldn't just be about you know, if I feel motivated today, cause I've got caught in that trap where I'm like, I just have to feel motivated to do it. But like any good habit, uh, like anything that's, you know, true or real, uh, it's not just about the motivation because motivation comes and goes. It has to be about something more. And so we re- notice this in this season and we go, Oh, okay. So it can't just be, I have to feel like it, there has to be when I don't feel like it, what do I do? Right. I, I love what you said. Yeah, it's true. We struggle with motivation. Yeah, I agree. I think, and I think a huge part is honestly like friends and relationships. Like I can't stress this enough, like having friends around that like wanted to grow, dig deep into their faith and stuff and have being surrounded by that mindset is like, is such a huge bo- like booster and was a huge booster for me. And like, like I would have like Chris Serna would just like, he would just text me and yeah. just to, like see how my day- week was going and see how I was doing and stuff. And that like that really pushed me and like just hanging out with friends constantly and and, like it's just it's really different not having those friends around that are also wanting to like dig deep with you right Mm. and so yeah it's it's just hard to find like motivation I agree like there's this thing that youth pastors love to say and uh, I'm sure more than that love to say it parents probably say it too say if you show me your friends I'll show you your future Because when you have acceptance with somebody or a group of people, then that leads to influence and they influence your life. So you're totally right, Kieran, that when you're surrounded by those people, it it, uh, gives you influence to head in that same direction that they're heading. And when you lose that, it can be easy to, if you don't have a direction, where are you? You're lost, right? So that's totally fair. Um, Back to the motivation part. For me, I actually work most Sunday mornings. 
So the time that my family watches it, like they all watch it together on a Sunday morning, but I'll be working. So that means that later on now I have to watch it on my own time and I have to set that up and add that to my schedule, write it on a list. And sometimes like I'll be in the middle of doing something and then I get cut up and other things. I'm like, oh, right, I have to do that. And then I also need to read my Bible. And sometimes I just get lost in that and I forget to do and I procrastinate because I also have other projects and they all build up. But definitely just something that helps me is just writing it all down and adding it to my schedule of other things. Mm. Well, if it makes you feel any better, um, you're not the only one who struggles with that. <laughs> I think we all can agree that we all struggle with it. But the the idea is you got to make it a priority, right? And if you if you don't do that, then things just kind of slip behind. And if they're not a priority, then of course it's not going to happen. So you got to write it down and make it a priority. And when you do that, that's when it happens. And that's totally fair. That's a real struggle too. You know, there's, you know, you're not, you're not actually with your family when it's premiering and you got to do it later. You're working like that's, that's a real struggle for sure. I'm sure there's some other people who feel that exact same way. And it's nice that it's on demand, but there's something nice about it when you do get to actually just participate in it live. It's more motivating almost. Right. So, all right. So here's the one other thing I want to ask you guys, if you had a friend, or somebody, you know, a sibling or whoever it might be really close to you. And they were to come to you and say, Hey, I'm really struggling in this season. I'm just feeling really lost and alone. And it's been really hard for me. If somebody came to you and asked you that, what would you say to them? Well, if it was one of my siblings, um, maybe just doing it with them, like maybe we could have like Bible studies or like do devotions together and then kind of walk through this journey together just so you have a partner for sure because it's kind of hard to do that on your own like then if you have like just reading through the bible and kind of talking to each other about it then you don't have to figure it out all on your own that's really good advice i mean you could do that with a friend too it would be over zoom right now but still but honestly eve that's absolutely fantastic advice and there's so much data that actually says that if you make a plan and set a time and do it with another person that that is the highest success rate of starting, you know, whether it's a, you know, a new endeavor, a new habit, a new, whatever it is, that is the absolute best way to do it. And so I love that piece of advice. Like say, we're going to do it together at this time in this place on this day. And if you do that, then it's like 80% of people who do it in that way, like actually see their goal to fruition. That's good. Um. If it was one of my friends, I would be like, I would say something like, like I would, I would do what Eve did, but like through the phone and stuff like through FaceTime and like, but like, if it was one of my friends who like, don't go to church and stuff, I would, I would talk to them about Jesus. And I would say something like, uh, this, this like, cause the, there's this one thing in the Bible where it says, uh, I promise you, you will go through trials and like, that was from Jesus. Like Jesus made that promise. And like, I love Jesus and everything, but he really like that one could have been left out. Like, I'm sure I'm not the only one who thinks like, he didn't really have to make that one because he doesn't, he he doesn't lie on his promises. Like he always keeps them. So he said, you will go through trials. And then like the other part of that is, but you will never go through them alone. So like, even like when we go through like, if an, if an adult goes through one, like, because like adults are like, like more mature and stuff, like maybe they'll, some like, of them, <laughs> they'll either like talk to someone or like that, that like that person will be the one with them or like, like you won't be alone. Like, yeah. and if you're like a teenager struggling with school, I know like teachers say like, you can talk to us, but no one ever talks to the teachers like that. Like, I'm not the only one who thinks that, I would never talk to a teacher about a problem unless it's like a math problem. Then I'll be like, (laughs) okay. But if I'm having like a life problem, like I would, I would go to like, probably, I would probably go to you, Justin, you or one of my leaders, my leaders, not leaders. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I would, I would, I would like the goal, like my goal, if someone comes to me for that, isn't to be like, okay, let's, obviously I want to help them with their problem and fix their problem, but it's also to be with them through their problem. For sure. No, that's, that's awesome. It's true. Like sometimes we just, we don't have to fix people. We just have to listen and we just have to be there for them. And I love that. 
Yeah, I totally. Yeah, I totally agree with like TJ's kind of way of approaching it. I'm not one to like. I really don't like pushing God on people. I do like. I I love helping people, and I will almost always like quote script quote quote scripture if I can, and like I uh, and. But I don't like, I don't, I'm not one to say, oh, hey, you should, you should come to church and then like force them. I want them to make that decision for themselves. Because if you like, if I force them to do something like that, it's not going to be, it's way less likely for them to actually enjoy it and keep yeah. going with it. But uh, like, all I like, I normally just start off by like having them advice. And then if they have more questions, and they like I can tell that they're curious and stuff, or they're still not still not helping. Then I tend to like really just like offer offer church to them or say, hey, you should uh, you want you want to get into call or something, and then I can like explain it more because I I have a lot of words that I say when I talk to people if I do talk to people, and so like texting is just so annoying because I don't want to say so many words and it takes so long but like yeah it's it's so annoying like it's just yeah. so time consuming to like type out every single word when I could For just sure. say it but like I don't like I just don't like forcing forcing that yeah. on people when they like especially if they don't believe then I don't like forcing it yeah um I want them to make that decision for themselves, for sure. but I do, I will, like, I'm, I'm not, I won't be like, I'm not, I'm a, like, I'm not ashamed of my faith or anything. And I will like talk about my, I will talk about my faith if they have questions, but I don't mm -hmm. want to force that on them. So I'll, I'll give them advice when they need it. And like, if they need more then I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm completely open to giving them more. For sure. I, I like what you mean though, because there's a right way to do this. You know, it's, you want to share your faith and be real, but not be weird. <laughs> right. Cause yeah. you, you can be weird really, really quickly, you know, and no, that's, that's fair. There's some wisdom in that for sure. Not to, to force it, to, to live it out and to show it and then to, to be willing to share, but at the right moments for sure. Yeah, Celeste, what's like one piece of advice. If you know, you had a friend coming to you and being like, I'm struggling with it. Like, what would you tell them? Um, with someone like I've had experience with a few of my friends that have struggled with quite a few different things and the most like you can help them and give them advice for the situation as much as you can but certain things you can only help with and it's like some things you can't like it's out of your reach yeah, that's true. but it's your I wouldn't say responsibility but as a friend um, it would be great for you to be alongside them and to support them through what for whatever they're going through and help them make decisions to like seek professional help for instance or even stuff like that like just kind of being that shoulder to just to kind of lean on but for sure sometimes it's just out of your control the best you can yeah. do is like just do your best comfort them support them through mm -hmm whatever they have and just like listen listen to them vent and yeah. everything or if something's bugging them and then just try to calm them down if they're kind of a little uptight and stuff so yeah i love that point i love that point you made though like sometimes sometimes they just have there's something going on in their life that you really it's really hard for you to like help out like it's it's something either it's something you haven't experienced or it's it could be it could be anything really but it's sometimes sometimes you just don't you can't get it or like or you just can't sympathize enough to know how know what to do and like I've experienced that and like I've I've been the friend that has been struggling and I've been the person the friend trying to help the person that's struggling right so like I've seen both ends of the spectrum and I know how use like useless or like helpless you can feel when you have a friend that's really struggling or having a hard time and you you don't know what to do because you just feel bad right yeah. but i completely agree like you just got to be you could be be there for them right you don't have yeah. to like if they if they're struggling and stuff there's only so much you can do if you don't understand but there mm -hmm. you can always you can always like be there for them and like just mm -hmm. be a friend right 
but like I know like there's stuff in my life that like I am and have have had to seek professional help for and like and it's like the only way that like somebody can understand and help right Mm -hmm. is somebody that knows what they're doing or like knows how to help right for sure so you can't take it too hard when like you don't know how to help yeah it's you just gotta just gotta be there for them but like help them through it right for sure no i I love what you guys are saying and it's true like we're not we're not meant to fix people you know but we're meant to be there for them and it's also maybe the best way you can be a great friend is to say to somebody like hey maybe i think you should reach out to somebody else for a little more help in this area like that's a true friend would be the type of person to gracefully uh say that and then help you seek that help like that is that's Mm -hmm. excellent way to be an awesome friend for somebody and if any of you are you're listening to this today, you're watching, and maybe you're really struggling with feeling lost and alone and confused, whatever that might be, feel free to reach out to us. Feel free to reach out to a friend or somebody else, a professional, just, just get that help. You know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There is no shame in that we all go through different struggles at different times and at different levels. And there is nothing wrong with admitting, Hey, I don't, I don't got this on my own, but Hey, I wanted to thank you guys. This has been an awesome conversation. I love yeah. how real you guys have been. This is, I, I think it's really, really helpful. And I, I love hearing what you guys have to say about life and just and just your your honest opinions on the things that you've experienced. And it's just so great to hear that from you guys. I, I really, I've said it again, and I, I said it before and I'll say it again. I have so much faith and belief in high school students and what you guys can do. I think you guys are world changers and I can't wait to see how you'll be used. And so uh, we, this has been a great episode of Hotspot. I absolutely love these conversations. They're going to come out every single Friday. Uh, and we just can't wait for more to come. It's, it's so great. Share this. If this has been helpful for you, pass it along to somebody else and make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss anything. This has been awesome. Great seeing you guys. We'll see you next week. Take care.